we're back. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, we've had a little bit of an absence uh, because Jenny was doing a whole lot of research to sort of get us as much information as possible on the man, the myth, the legend, <laughs> uh, Edgar James Cheese, right? I'm Edgar just, J. Cheese, right? Just J? Yes, I'm not the J is The J is there. something. <laughs> um, so anyway, today, and this is kind of where this episode is going to end up going. There's only so much information that's available, but we're going to bring you any and all information that is readily available about Cheese Right today. Um, and uh, so here we go. Well, you're talking about a man whose history was literally erased. And so it's difficult. It's been difficult to piece together his life and um, find his work and his eyes and his artistic eye because of that very, very thorough erasing of history that happened to poor Edgar J. Cheese Wright. But it's possible to do, um, it's possible to do with some digging and some microfilm work. And then number one, as a fellow artist, it's possible to do by, by taking a deep look at his work, which I know very well from living and working in his building for five years now. I have come to it every day a deeper appreciation of the artistry of this great, great, great artist of the 1920s of the arts and crafts movement. So um, I would, it's, a, it's very exciting to me to be able to piece this together like a puzzle, like mm -hmm. a mystery, like detective work. Um, I've made site visits to two of his most famous projects. Um, the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel and Greystone Mansion, nice. which we will talk about today. Yeah, and the this erasure is, like, we've been hinting at this, like, <laughs> sort of more nefarious component of the Cheese Wright Studios building throughout each episode, and we're going to get to that uh, pretty much at the end. Okay. We're kind of, we're kind of going to, you know, saving the, mm -hmm. the most nefarious for last, if you will. Um, so yeah, so so let's do it. We can start with, um, I believe we're going to start with Greystone Mansion. Oh, right. well, Greystone Mansion is... Or, or wait, 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 before mm -hmm. we do that, I apologize. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Can, can we... Do you have any sort of history on him at all whatsoever oh. in terms of like birth, you know, children, whatever? Well, he was born in England um, in the late um, 1800s. He was, he came, he had interior architecture and interior design in his blood. He came from a family that had gone back centuries in interior design. His first job was at Gillows of London, which started in 1695. They were, um, they, they, that's what they did was interior architecture and they were also a woodworking firm. Mm -hmm. And they were so famous and so well known uh, Chippendale used them to manufacture their furniture. They they were the best in interior woodworking. When you think about beautiful old interiors, a main, main component of them is the woodworking. The staircases, the walls, the paneling, the doors, the windows, it all needed to be built. And one of Cheese Wright's greatest assets was that he had come from a foundation, not only in choosing furnishings, draperies, rugs, but in the actual building of beautiful interiors with an intimate knowledge of woodworking. So um, an interesting part of Gillow's history is that they had been for many years involved in trade, in shipping out furniture to different parts of the world, in um, having wood shipped to them back to England, so the part of the mural, which was so, the whole left panel was about shipping and trading, well, that mm. was tied into Cheese Wright's own history and was part of, probably part of the reason he was, he found it so fascinating. And w around what time did he make his way to the United States? He came to America in um, 1909. Where did he, did he go, like he Ellis started, Island kind of? No, I'm not sure about that, but he, I know he, Maybe he got a work permit because he started mm. working at a firm in New York. Uh, he did not stay there long. He went to the Midwest and lived in St. Louis for a time, and that's where he met his wife. She was actually a widow with two children who he adopted, 
and pretty it wasn't long after that he came to LA apparently when he first came to America he had his sight set on California mm. um, you have to remember at the day everyone who was anyone in the design movement was gravitating towards LA Europe was really? in an upheaval um, World War two World War One before that sure. had put Europe on edge mm -hmm. and um, all of the more stable business and the exciting new building was being done in LA and that's something even LA hasn't really gotten through its head how important no. it was as an arts and crafts center oh arts God. and crafts movement is beloved you know people know about Stickley well actually the period in history that it lasted was very short it did not last long because of those wars, but where the money was, where the where the taste was, where the excitement was to try something new, um, and an arts and crafts was a new movement. It moved away from Victorian, moved away from Edwardian. It was a whole new way of thinking about building, and that was in LA. It was in Pasadena specifically. What Pasadena was one of the three the three international centers of the arts and crafts movement. So the uh, what is it called like the Center for Design in Pasadena? That's is that pretty old, or, or was that kind of born out of that movement, um, maybe? You mean the one, the L.A. Design Center? Mm, Pasadena has a design center as well. Oh, the school. Yeah, yes. exactly. I'm not sure. No, that was later. Oh, later, okay. Yes, yes. But that's fascinating. Okay, mm -hmm. so when Cheese Ride came to California, he came to Pasadena? He started at, in L.A., but he pretty quickly came to Pasadena. He came to Pasadena in 1918 mm -hmm. and he had a he had a storefront which he immediately had um he, he loved love love um whimsical architecture so that his initial storefront was designed in the tudor style mm. and, uh, yeah i was gonna say when, yeah. when i first walked into the building it was very sort of like um what do you call it um, down the rabbit hole, you know, Alice in Wonderland, <laughs> yeah. kind of a feel, but not as like warped. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He, I, all the projects he did for himself, for his own business, were not just any storefront, any building. Every single one of them was designed to look like something in history. Mm. So he started with a tutor. He immediately had to rent extra space because of his knowledge in woodworking was in high demand because these interiors were so large. They involved so much woodworking and building. So he immediately started to think, well, I need something bigger. And that's when he started conceptualizing his studios building, which as I talked about in the past episode, took many years of planning. Mm -hmm. And it was a conceptual work of art in every single way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he moves to LA, then Pasadena settles in, uh, begins planning out the studios building, mm -hmm. and then his dream sort of is, is realized. Yes. He moves into the studios built. Now, and he didn't working. he didn't build mm -hmm. that building. He moved into that building. Is that correct? No, he built it from the ground up. Okay. With mm -hmm. obviously with an architect yes, being yes. that he's interior so an yes, exterior. Yes, to Panas uh, um Irish architect. So so the the Cheese Art Studios building was built from scratch. Yeah, from the ground up. Wow. Mm -hmm. Every okay. Brick was planned at the flagstone, the um, interior, the, I've, the walls, which were hollow to hold early phone lines. He worked with the Bell Company. Mm -hmm. It was uh, the first building in Pasadena that had uh, phone lines run. Right, I remember we, we, mm -hmm. we talked about that mm -hmm. in the last episode. Okay, cool, so then it's he's pretty much realizing the American dream. He at was this particular... realizing it, but all, he was working very hard too because yeah. he was in demand. He was number one. He was getting his phone was ringing off the hook or telegram maybe <laughs> before the phone, and he was working hard on projects. Uh, Greystone Mansion, which we're going to talk about now, was forty thousand square feet. All those interiors are Cheese Wright's work, and he was also furnishing it. So that was a big project. I'm pretty certain that's how he got the money to build his studios building because it was such a big got project. But he had others. It. That wasn't the only one. Simultaneously, is working on the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel, which we'll talk about too. Cool. 
Well, let's get to it. Let's let's get into the Greystone Mansion world. Well, this you know Greystone Mansion is just legendary. They film so many films there. Most people, when they have an idea of it, just from seeing the films, that in the back of their mind, they're like, "Wow, that's cool!" And that was Greystone Mansion. This picture here. Um, well, before we do that, mm -hmm. it's it's located in Pasadena. It's in Beverly Hills. It's in Beverly yes, Hills. Yes. <laughs> I'm so good on my um, geography. <laughs> okay. So so the Greystone Mansion is in Beverly Hills and mm -hmm. it was interior architected by Cheese Wright mm -hmm. and do you know what year that was by any chance? It, ha um, it had to be um, in the 1920s I don't know okay. the exact founding year I'm Got sure it. I could find that out but it was in the 20s already cool mm -hmm. all right so so now we're, we can get into the details of this gorgeous gorgeous expansive building well, this picture here shows this beautiful, um, influential checkerboard floor. Um, it always has a very Art Deco look, the, the strong contrast of the black and white. Uh, nobody, you have to remember, nobody had done a flooring like this before, she's right. And he's so innovative, he's such an artist, the patterns change, the pattern on the left is different than mm -hmm. the pattern on the white, mm -hmm. but they're both very, very bold graphically. Mm -hmm. um, this was for the Dohenies. This was for Ned Dohini, the son of Dohini. Was at the time the richest man in L.A., so he had the money. He had the uh, willingness to hire someone willing, obviously, to do some exper experimentation design-wise, mm. which he did do with this building. And this was his gift to his son and his new wife and their young family. Nice. This is the fireplace, one of the fireplaces in the main dining hall. Um, what to me was so interesting about it is right above the fireplace is a permanent mural. Um, again, just like in his studio's building, Cheese Wright l always loved to have embedded into the design artwork. It wasn't just like he bought paintings to hang on the walls. He had mural work done on site, permanent mural work that was incorporated as a part of his design. Look at this thing. You've got the beautiful woodworking with the hand carving, which he, he had all the craftsmen working for him that knew how to do this level of hand carving, this level of woodworking, and then a beautiful painting right in the center of it that's a mural, that's a permanent part of that fireplace design. Amazing, beautiful. This is the one of the, the big window in that main room. It, it looks like it's about 20 feet high and the ceiling itself is about 25, 30 feet high, a magnificent lead glass window. Cheese Wright was a master of window design and I know that from working in his studio's building where those windows are just gorgeous. They let in fantastic natural light. No one needs a flash at all ever during the day. <laughs> they're high, they're lead glass, and they're just stunningly beautiful. He obviously loved windows. Um, and this was a difference from, remember, one, one criticism of arts and crafts, and it's valid, which I know from growing up in Pasadena, where they had um, the buildings, is they're so dark. Frank Lloyd Wright's houses were known to be dark. The windows are small. Mm. Jesus Wright was not into that. Every um, building he's designed that I've seen has high ceilings, high windows. Like I said, you just don't need a flash all day long. There's gorgeous natural light pouring in. And the design of the window itself is just a gorgeous thing to look at. Yes. I mean, I could photograph just the yeah, reflection they forever. Come in. So I love beautiful. that when, when reflections come in from the window under the floor. Oh, now this is the top of that same gorgeous window that's 20 feet high. The ceiling is a pitched ceiling. It's a beam ceiling. Just like in the grand room of this Cheese Wright Studios building, every important project Cheese Wright did had a beam ceiling. He loved, love, love beam ceilings. Greystone has a gorgeous one with the pitch you can see it has the wood carving incorporated into it. A chandelier. He always had a gorgeous uh, chandelier centerpiece in, mm. in his main rooms. That's the original chandelier right there. Just The room is just, you walk in, you're like, whoa, my <laughs> God. Grand. It's, it's so grand. It's, it's magnificent. And it's, 
it's lasted that beauty it doesn't look dated it looks just beautiful <laughs> that there, there it is in better light um, again he's got the wood carving um, he obviously convinced Doheny to use a lot of craftsmen he had 10 full-time wood carvers working with him on the project and they carved the staircase and they carved this work down the ceiling this is an interesting aspect of cheese Wright's designs which i will discuss you see this in the hollywood roosevelt hotel and at graystone he does this level thing where you walk into the main room and there's the room and then there's a balcony with a different level overlooking the main lobby mm. he did that at in Greystone and he did it again at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel mm. and here it's done at Greystone it's such a cool thing to do instead of just walking into a box mm -hmm. with a high ceiling you're able to walk up to another level of that room look out on it it's it's just a great 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 design mm -hmm. um, element it's so arches. intricate. I mean, it's my goodness, so that intricate. would work. Here we have arches, arches, arches again, which I've said is one of Cheese Wright's signatures, mm -hmm. arches. He loved arches. There's arches all over every building he's done, including his own. Here we have them here. But here there's the additional element because, you know, the, the, the money involved and the, you know, the quality that Doheny wanted of the wood hand carving, it's mm -hmm. all hand carving. Well, that's why Cheese Wright is a master of the arts and crafts movement, and that's a big reason why this, this um, just to again mention the importance of this podcast, we're talking about one of the greats, one of the capital D-A-G greats of the arts and crafts movement, who's not known. Mm -hmm. I mean, here's a movement that's so popular, so beloved, there's mm -hmm. like stacks and stacks of books on it. People love these. Well, this guy, he was one of the greatest, and it's way, way, way past time that he's recognized for how good he was at it and important. And I feel like as far as like Andrew Lloyd Wright is concerned, there's a lot Frank of, Lloyd Wright. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. thank you, Frank Lloyd Wright. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Frank Lloyd Wright, the greens, which you know. But, but I feel like his story is not so like clean either. No. You know what I mean? Like there's a lot of just shady stuff that went on, but for some reason, we all are well, well, well familiar of him and his work, and we are not familiar. I think Frank Lloyd Wright, just from reading his writing and all, he was a, quite a character. He, he spoke very well. He was, um, he made himself a legend. Mm. He was a bit He was arrogant, good at, like, branding himself. Which I was okay, you know, because some of his work is just amazing. Like, yeah. I've seen it in New York. I've seen it in Pasadena. Pasadena has gorgeous Frank Lloyd Wright sure. work. All over but LA. she's right, I think part of the thing, first of all his studio's building, remember, in the front was showrooms and shop, in the back was a wood shop. He was hands on. He mm. was in that wood shop going over plans. He knew all the tools. He came from a firm in London that was mainly a wood shop. He was hands-on. He probably, he could talk, I'm sure. He could talk with the clients. You're saying he didn't have time to because he, he didn't was working. He did have time yeah, yeah, to yeah. make a legend of himself. Mm. He was too busy working. Isn't that interesting? All <laughs> yeah. right, right on. But right on. because he was so knowledgeable and so talented, that's why it's such a joy just to look at his work. Look mm -hmm. at that ceiling. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, the floor again. Here I was mentioning the two different patterns. I mean, any normal it's designer would say, side. oh my God, the black and white's so cool. Let's just put the whole thing. Right. No, that wasn't enough. He had to do, diff he had to bring in a different element there. And that is so cool and so beautiful. And part of the reasons J Greystone, one of its functions has been a design showcase. Every interior designer that walks in there is just like, oh, oh, the floor. And that's been copied. That's been copied all over Hollywood, all over Los Angeles. Yeah, I was going to say I was <laughs> at the Oviet years ago in downtown, mm -hmm. and this is very reminiscent mm -hmm. of that. Yeah, and but that's I, where they probably saw there it There you first. go. This would be mm -hmm. the original of that. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. This is in Greystone Mansion. Um, this is some beautiful hand stenciled wallpaper he used in one of the upstairs. Um, I think that's in a bathroom. Nice. Look how pretty that is. And remember, his studio building had um, on staff hand stencilers who would do this beautiful work that he would then import 
uh, again a wallpaper like the wallpaper mural we've talked about in the hall this is some more of cheese Wright's excellent taste and his you know appreciation of artists look how pretty that is and do you think that this gets restored every well, once in a while? Well, they're pretty, the Grace, that's one thing you can say for Greystone Mansion. They've got a Friends of Greystone who are very much in, on top of the restaurant. We need a Friends of Cheese Right Studios <laughs> we need building. It so badly. God. <laughs> so badly. <laughs> yeah, because it lo everything looks so... Um, they take care of it. Yeah. I mean, they take care of well it because they love to. it. It's a lot of retirees who just appreciate the beauty, but they also make a lot of money there from filming. Oh. That they are filming at Greystone Mansion almost year round, so they're able to parlay that income into restoration. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we need to either get mm -hmm. films happening at the yeah. Cheese Rights Studios building or some kind of like it needs, patron. It needs, it needs the same level of care, obviously. First of all, the, this is lovely, beautiful. I, I can't say anything wrong about it, but it doesn't have a one of the most important, important historical artworks like that mural is. Of course. That mural is way more than just an artwork. Right. That is, an, that is a visionary yeah, it's more, work. It's way more than decoration. It's visionary, right. and it's about our history. Oh, that's There's one nice. of the little white roses, the that's detail, nice detail work mm -hmm. of that beautiful hand stenciling. He, it was stenciling because mm. um, the idea was that it could be reproduced. It could be done elsewhere if someone else wanted. And look, at, again, I was talking in the last episode about how he and his wallpaper artist, Chad, personally chose the colors for the mural in the building. Look at the color. Yeah, I mean, the that branch, little yellow. It's mm -hmm. not brown, it's gray, which sure, is better. It's sure. almost like an overcast day because of the light. And that just makes it that much prettier. <laughs> yeah, you're right. This would be a totally different feel if it was that, like, if it sort was of crap a, brown. Yeah, <laughs> brown branch, bright green leaves. Right. Yellow. This is on a whole never lo level. Sure. Someone was a painter who chose this, these colors. They understood color. That's so nice. This is some of the beautiful woodworking done in the kitchen, um, the cabinet doors. Everything had to be great, and even the kitchen. Look at those kitchen doors. They're just so awesome. Glass. You can see what's inside them. So practical. How many times in your kitchen do you have to open the cabinet to find something? Well, yes. here you can see it. Yes. You know, great, great cabinet design. Beautiful. <laughs> yes. I love Again, that color, copied. Too copied mm -hmm. many times this is one of those deep windows which I've come to appreciate every single day because we have one in the grand room he would do a deep window with leaded glass and it, it put it the light comes in the beautiful reflections come mm -hmm. onto the floor it's so pretty it's such a pretty thing to, to make a deep window like that cheese right did that all the time I've seen it many times used in his, his uh, studio's building. On the right is a built-in shelf. He, he loved built-in. The thing with Cheese Right when you hired him, you weren't just getting a guy who would like ship furniture into your room. He was designing the room from scratch. He was using his knowledge, which went back to 1695, of interior woodworking to create a space that had these beautiful built-ins. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A more of the beautiful hand stenciled wallpaper. This is in um, Mrs. Doheny's um, changing room, dressing room. Look at that. This is inside her closet. This is all the closets and cabinets have this cute, Jeez. cute design. For, and it's a little more, it's more fun. Yeah. Look at how fun it is. The, um, the ribbons and the flowers beautiful artwork you could put that in a frame itself True. again he had a staff that did this and again the color yeah. the color choices yeah. are just so the, so beautiful so lavender. not obvious yeah it's not obvious look at that shade of pink mm -hmm. it's not a it's not a magenta it's a gorgeous rose light rose he's got the lavender the pink couldn't be prettier, couldn't be prettier. But you're right, there's a lot of shade, like yeah. use of, of shade yeah. and shading that's yeah. so beautiful. Definitely it's like It adds style. an extra, it's almost like all of his stuff is layered in mm, one way exactly, or another. Exactly, exactly, it's layered. And look at the ribbon, I mean, as a painter myself and I draw, 
look at how the ribbon goes in and out, in and out. That's giving it a depth. That's mm -hmm. not flat. That ribbon has a dimensionality to it that only can be done by a, with a painter's eye mm -hmm. and technique. That is a gorgeous, gorgeous piece of work right there. Yes. There it is again. You see how it was used in the shelving as a background um, <laughs> to just make it that much prettier. Now, is this <laughs> drawn on or is this wallpaper? This is wallpaper. Okay. It was so interesting to me to go to Greystown to see how many times he used beautiful hand um, stenciled wallpaper, mm -hmm. considering how much I love that hand stenciled mural mm -hmm. um, or woodblock print mural in his building. Um, that was one of his expertise was wallpaper. He had a wallpaper artist that was mentioned in the Star News article, but he also had, which w had one picture in that article of a staff of artists, women, which, you know, went, gave, was giving women jobs at the time, who were doing this beautiful work. Nice. Handwork. Love that. There's oh, that's a, nice. That's backing up. See, he had the, the drawers, which would hold, you know, socks, whatever, and then on top of that, um, oh. Isn't that a cute? That's a closet. <laughs> I mean, it's just a closet, but it's so special. It's a dream closet, right? There. Yeah. It's so pretty. Yeah, it's so pretty. This whole dressing room is just so cute. So I also pretty. love the windows on top. I mean, it's like mm -hmm. every opportunity to use Let the light. light. And that's a big, big difference. I mean, I grew up in Pasadena. I lived on a street that right around the corner had a whole row of those famous... Um, what do they call craftsmen's homes. Mm -hmm. They're real pretty from the outside, but I was young enough to be able to see them when they were kind of dilapidated. They were not the great, coolest things to go into. You'd They're walk very into dark. Them. It was dark. <laughs> Kate cavernous. It was cavernous. It was dark. They were dilapidated at the time, so it was a bit scary. It was <laughs> creepy. Cheese, any cheese right design, no matter how dilapidated, would never be scary mm. because you got the light pouring in. You got the reflections of the lead glass on mm -hmm. the window. You've got the cheery painting. Mm -hmm. He knew how to make interiors livable and bright. Oh my God, this is the lobby that's so famous. I like seeing it. I think this is my photograph. I love yes. seeing it in black and white um, because yeah. um, it doesn't distract then by the, by, the whole, by the whole of it. Here we've got one of his gorgeous lead glass windows, super tall. You've got the staircase. It has the black marble on the f face and on the top you've got the black and white. Well. You want to talk about a cool staircase. And then he has a hand-carved railing, again, which used his 10 woodworkers hand-carving that railing. This is the main door here. It's got the um, signature design on top. It's got wrought iron work, which in his studio's building, along with a state-of-the-art cabinet shop, he had a wrought iron shop. There's that beautiful top, portico on the top, with that design, which has been filmed a million times. And it's, it's so stately. So you walk into that room, and when you first walk in, it's a, you see you got a staircase going down. There's arches, too, leading out to the front porch. And then you've got that level thing going on. Mm. So you've got the balcony. You've got, so you've got a staircase on the right, a staircase on the left, going up to that balcony. You could almost hear <laughs> There should be like a soundtrack dun, for dun, walking dun. into <laughs> that building. It's so dramatic. Mm. He's such a master of dramatic architecture. <laughs> He's a drama queen. <laughs> He's very, dramatic. Very well done. Again, beautiful deep windows, which I just love with a window seat. There, the wood, the paneled working around, the lead glass. Um, again, cheese right was imitated. This is actually the kitchen staircase, but oh, look how pretty it is. Yeah. He's got stonework instead of the, um, you know, the, the tiles. More expensive tile, but it's still gorgeous. Again, he was he loved floor. He knew flooring too. That's why I keep saying people have to understand how neglected Cheese Wright has been. Cheese Wright was the guy who called because you didn't have to hire a floor guy. You didn't have to hire a door guy. You didn't have to hire mm. a window guy. You didn't have to hire a ceiling guy. He did it all. He did the manufacturing. That's part of the reason probably he was so busy and didn't have time to make a legend of himself like Frank Lloyd Wright with interviewers because he was so hands-on. Mm -hmm. Again, a beautiful, more simple but 
in its simplicity, its beautiful railing, a chandelier. He didn't let the servants down. I he was gave gonna, them right. a beautiful thing to um, enjoy as well. But there is a marked difference between yes. the servant and the non-servant quarters. Yes, but quarters. this actually on the tours has become so popular because it's so beautiful in its minimalism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the ceiling above that staircase we were just oh, looking at. Oh, whoa! <laughs> Look at that. It's um, a pitched beam ceiling. It's very interesting because in that main ground room he also had a pitch ceiling. But here for the servant staircase he does another pitch ceiling with the more natural wood and the bare mm -hmm. beams. Well, again, when we're I always said about so Cheese Wright, he was on the cusp between Edwardian design and arts and crafts. Mm -hmm. He loved both. He knew both. His own past, including his grandfather, who was the most famous decorator in London, had gone new Edwardian design like the back of his hand, but he was younger, he was heading forward, he was moving in arts and crafts, and everything about him is, is shown in this beautiful uh, ceiling of that staircase. Also his sun motif. Mm -hmm. I've seen that in mm -hmm. his building. He loved the sun. And he had a sun motif right in the front lobby oh doors, God, that's which so we will true. see. Here's his sun again on that ceiling. And he's humble enough to give that most beautiful part to the servants. It's so beautiful. Because yeah, I remember so, when we were doing the episode of the Cheese Right Studios mm -hmm. building, there were so many instances where you're pointing out of here's a sun. A sun. Esque. Here's a sun esque, like with the wood, with the wrought iron, with all that's these different of, ways. That's his, I would say the sun and hearts are his main motif. Right. And, sun and love. And he harnessed mm -hmm. that light in he every totally window. Did. Amazing. So that's why Cheeseworth was way, 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 way above average in terms of an artist. And he was an artist through and through. He was an interior architect. He was an, you know, and I look at that stair, a curved staircase, very similar in its curve to the one in the building, which we have pictures right of. Mm -hmm. that's right there it goes around this is the in the billiards room this is again he put in a beam ceiling a deep window but this one gets almost like um you know how in the um, cabinet of Dr. Caligari, those great Art Deco film masterpieces, which is interesting because there was also a film room in this building. But see how it starts to slant at odd angles? Yeah. You've got the angle down here, and you've got the angle of the ceiling. Mm -hmm. It's cool. <laughs> That's why it's so contemporary. That's not no, an in ordinary window. That's kind of cool with the angles going up. Then he's yeah, moving got here. One here, here. Yeah, it could definitely be a fantastic Art Deco set, and I'm sure it has been in some movies. But again, beautiful, 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 beautiful beam ceiling. And I the, love that this is a little mm -hmm. bit more green shaded, but still bare. Yeah, or barren, it's I guess. more bare because you know, the billiards room was a place more for people to smoke mm -hmm. and drink and mm -hmm. play billiards. But um, that's why I'm so excited to be honored enough to be able to bring back this master of the arts and craft era. Be, and um, the reason, part of the reason was his own background and, and intimate knowledge of woodworking, but also that creative eye. Mm -hmm. That is a great, I love that window. That's and so I beautiful. actually told the Greystone Mansion people, I said, for all this place has been photographed, I do not see enough photographs of these windows. Mm -hmm. The windows are magnificent. And they're, oh yes, they are. They, they know because they're there yeah. every day too, like I am. Oh, another billiards room window. You got a pitch ceiling, you've got the beams, you got the more bare look, you've got some kind of stencil yeah. here on the wall. It's cool. It's beautiful. It's pitched. Yeah. It's just a beautiful interior. Lead glass windows, deep windows. You've That's got the paneled so wall. So you've got the, probably the beautiful wood. Look at that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there's another. Yeah, right more here. stenciling. He would. He likes stenciling, and he would use that. And um, that's one of the reasons I have said, suspected he was involved with Hearst Castle interiors, which we're not talk, we're not, we don't have pictures of, because there was also quite a bit of stenciling on the beams there. Mm. But that is not, again, not known, not talked about. But here and in the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel, he would, for that extra design element, he would stencil, he would use quite a bit of stenciling. This is the Madeline Garden um, now. 
um, the original grand room um, with a gorgeous, gorgeous uh, lead glass window, which I appreciate every single day. It's deep, very much like the one we just saw. It's got the lead glass, it's got the beam ceiling. So he, in his own building, he kind of took all the elements that he loved and his customers loved and put it, made one for himself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is the tea room, with, which has beautiful French doors. The whole building is surrounding an atrium and on either side are French doors. There's French doors in the tea room and French room doors in the VIP room and every afternoon. They let in these beautiful light patterns that I photograph every time I see them. I mean, They're I don't. So I would pretty. be there all day long. They're so pretty, and that's the joy of having a yes. beautiful window p face the right way, which I'm right. sure was planned. Of course, because he knew what he was doing to let in those beautiful lights. This is the wi window in the what's now the Kiss Bistro. Um, when it was built, it was one of his shops. Again, look at the charm. He's got the lead glass. He's got the little um, diamonds on top. This was a sh these were show windows. And, and we're bringing um, we're bringing these images back, even though we've already talked about the building. But we're bringing them back as a co sort of a comparison. Yeah. Of, of his because remember, Cheese White has oh. been lost to history. Right. So we're kind of saying, um, excuse me, look at this. These elements are this are obviously by the same eye. Mm -hmm. It's to help bring back his work and to show what his style was as, when you, you know, look at more simple language this was his style mm -hmm. beautiful windows lead glass beam ceilings arches sun motif heart that's right. Cheese right right there right and mm -hmm. so when you look at like the the records for Greystone Mansion and the Roosevelt Hotel is he mentioned as I was not happy at the Greystone Mansion tour they had a gift shop and they had a book on the guy who did the exterior and nothing, they weren't even mentioning Jesus. <laughs> I right. don't understand. <laughs> that, that's a, that just, yeah, that's not right. First of all, they, if they'd done a little research, they could have, you know, figured it out because there was one, art, one letter to the editor published by his son in 2003 saying, um, excuse me, this article's on Greystone Mansion. You're not talking about, you know, my father, my stepfather who uh, designed it all. So, um, but they don't mention him. They said, I'm going to write something for their newsletter, which will hope, and hopefully yeah. this podcast will hope bring it back. Yes. But, and then and is that the same for the Roosevelt as well? The Roosevelt as well. They, you know, I talked to them. I said, um, cause there you can, they mention him. If you look up the history, they'll say he built it, but they don't talk about him. They don't mention him. They uh, have not been friendly in terms with me trying mm. to look, say, look, guys, you need to give more credit to mm -hmm. uh, the man who did this fabulous interior where the first Oscars were filmed. Again, you're talking, his interiors were so beautiful, they've been used throughout the years since his death in many different ways, and the people are just reaping the benefit of this artist, this great artist. Yes, and he's uh -huh. not at all getting the not, credit yeah, that he deserves. Yeah, they don't name him. I'm mm -hmm. like, mm. Mm -hmm. And uh, no, they have not been friendly or helpful in uh, getting his credit restored, which I hope will change. Yes. <laughs> this is another beautiful window um, from an upstairs bedroom. This was interesting to me because of the shutters. As you know, in his studio's building has the uh, New Orleans look, the colonial, French colonial design, and um, there they are, the shutters on the windows, which he was building his, the plans for his building, which took 10 years to plan, were simultaneous with Greystone Mansion. So he's thinking the same thoughts. So this is why it was interesting to me, he's got the shutters. And look what a cute uh, window that is. So is the is upstairs this bedroom, the shutters were functional too. Uh -huh. You're in a bedroom, you want to shut out the light sometime, sleep right. in. <laughs> <laughs> or let it all in. Yeah. I, I love the options. Yeah, you have the option. Take a nap during the day, you know, on a hot LA day, you'd probably want them closed. This was pre-air conditioning, so the darker the better when it gets hot. And those shutters were very efficient about again he was a good engineer mm -hmm. i've talked about the way his studio's building was engineered it's like these the are most beautifully engineered to keep out the sun when out, you want yeah. it out when it's like 100 degrees out and that's mm -hmm. kind of what i was thinking it's like mm -hmm. the most some of the most beautiful 
functional mm -hmm. art, really. Right. right. I mean, because a lot of the times when you have so much beauty, it is like it's not as functional, yeah. right? Like it, it has to sort of decide whether it's beautiful totally, or functional. Yeah. And I feel like so much of his designs are kind of both. And that's yes. really, really And that cool. was the big asset he gave to his clients. And that's why he was so popular. That's why he got so much work. Because his clients would say, my God, once he was done, they say, not only does it look great, it's working. Right. And that's why you don't I mean, see. down to the, yeah. to the wall, the hollow walls, mm -hmm. where even today, in the Cheese Wright Studios buildings, you can insert like fiber optics. Yeah. Because he made it yeah. available. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Another beautiful graystone mansion, leaded glass window um, in an upstairs bedroom, um, beautiful floor. So right now, when you go into the graystone mansion, it's essentially empty. Like no, it's just a tourist destination. It's empty. One of the rooms, a bedroom the Doheny family had in storage and they gave, donated, so it shows the original furnishings. Because um, Do Ned Doheny, um, in another element of the story, Ned Doheny was killed by his butler less than a year after the project. They just moved in. Whoa, they I, d I don't know anything about the Dohenys. In. Yeah, it's a dark history of, the, of Greystone Mansion. Had. He had a butler he'd had with him for years who was had some problems. They knew he was a bit disturbed. Anyway, he shoots him and, and does a and then shoots himself wow. in the downstairs bedroom less than one year after it was I wonder built. if he was like in love so with Doheny or something. It could have been. That's been, right? been suspected. Um, they don't know why he would do something that awful, but he did it. And it was a murder-suicide. Wow. And um, so he was dead less than a year. He finally moves in to this mansion. She stayed and um, she kept the original furnishings. And then eventually she had it all redecorated, maybe to take the memory away or whatever. She had a new, got a new husband. She kept the, you know, the, the place she until lived she in the died. Place. Uh -huh. Yeah. And the Doheny family had put into storage one of the original bedroom furnishings, which they returned and are on the tour. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can see what they look like. Again, we have Malanga. This is, again, one of my favorite Comparing. doors in yeah. the whole place. This is the doorway out to the atrium. You see that sun motif? It's just like the we saw on the ceiling of Greystone on the stairway. There's a beautiful sun motif on the doorway. This doorway has the doors, it has a transom, the round window, the staircase leading upstairs, and it's just beautiful. It, and again, it lets in cool light. There's light. The light moves throughout light the day, right? There's light shadows thrown on the floor, mm -hmm. which I many times photograph every time of day. <laughs> and that sun motif, it's, it's a visionary, it's a very cool thing, that doorway, leading out to the sunny areas. Uh -huh. It's all about the sun. Yes. And and um, my boss, who did the latest interior decoration, it was, was very in tune with Cheese Wright just as an artist. She put a sun fountain out on the atrium. So the atrium is right. all about sun. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. nice that she has been keeping... She's been respecting the space big oh, time. Oh, yes. Yeah. She, and she had a... She has very... She's very new agey herself, very intuitive, and she just kind of summoned Cheese Ride, and <laughs> she got it many times she did get it. What nice. He was this is doorways from, this is in the VIP room, the other side of the atrium. Um, those beautiful light right. panes on that lead glass, uh, that French door, lighting in the light um, reflected on the flooring like you see in Greystone Mansion. It's the same eye, it's the same designer, it's the same guy who knew how to use doorway and window light to make a space just that more beautiful. Oh my God. You could take every piece of furniture out. This In this it's furnished, this is set up for a wedding we actually had. Mm. Um, they chose this decor and color scheme. You see there's a crystal ball. <laughs> they were so cool, they dressed up in old-fashioned clothes like um, he had a scabbard and all, really cool couple. But this is the very nice use of the VIP room, um, which we now call it. Um, but it has the beautiful window. And it has you. 
Uh, <laughs> we see you. <laughs> nice. That happens a lot. I take a picture. Oh my well, God, there's mirrors, <laughs> lots of mirrors. You guys. I'm always taking room. pictures. So <laughs> That's quick, quick, quick. Cute. I had to get a bigger phone because I, uh, it, I filled the memory with pictures. I got uh, a huge. I recently had to even as many pictures as my phone hold. I had to like start buying iCloud storage because I keep taking pictures. <laughs> <laughs> I would do. I completely understand. And of course, I can't throw any of them away. No, of course them not. Well, I feel like the sun alone changes the images yeah, every time. It does, and I'm glad for it because this, you know, it's magical moments you can capture. Right? Yeah, yeah. And it, it, it's timeless, you know. 1927, that window looked just like that. And now its picture was taken, you know, last year. It, it, it's a, it's a cool continuum yes. that photography can do of time. It's yeah. definitely like a time machine. It, um, <laughs> All right, so then we're going to um, jump over to the Roosevelt okay. Hotel. And so, I mean, all of this should look very familiar, like the themes will sort of reiterate yes, themselves. Yes, exactly. Exactly. This is the beautiful lobby of the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel, which, thank God, has not been over-renovated. It still looks pretty much like it did when Cheese Wright built it in the early 20s. There's a fountain in the center, which yeah, we didn't show in the picture, but Greystone Mansion also has a fountain in the lobby. Mm. You've got the beam ceilings. Here he used cool stenciling. He has stenciling all over that ceiling, and it's one of the most beautiful ceilings so beautiful. I've ever seen. It looks a lot like Hearst Castle, um, but even mm. better, the you know, because Cheese Wright had that great eye, and look at that gorgeous ceiling. Uh, very high again that element I was talking about about the levels you walk in the oh, lobby yeah. okay and yeah you're on the lobby but then there's a level there's a balcony and that thing goes all the way around with openings in it to look down onto the main area the main area has arches surrounding it the second lobby just like in Greystone has the rectangular openings and it's cool up there you walk up there first of all you're closer to that beautiful ceiling and chandelier <laughs> and then you're looking down on the lobby it's just a great 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 design element that she's right was uh, smart enough and talented enough to use and we can't really make it out here so much but what what is the f the tile kind of look like it's a beautiful again stone flooring mm -hmm. you know um, which he had had put in a very Italian-esque um, I think the design for the Roosevelt was perhaps by the client requester or also sure, the style sure. it was very popular in Hollywood at that time Greystone um, Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel is on Hollywood Boulevard mm -hmm. it's almost directly across from Grauman's Chinese mm -hmm. so it's such a cool place it's a cool area I look I like Hollywood well specifically Boulevard. Roosevelt is mm -hmm. on Highland yeah right and it's then it's right, right there. before that intersection yeah. of the quintessential Hollywood it, it totally that is. people come yeah. to see yeah so there's an Italian feel that yeah, it's like Mediterranean a little mm -hmm. bit. Remember, she's right when Gillow was of London, they did, they did furniture in the Italian style. So he was very familiar with not just a French style, but with Italian style. Mm. And it was mentioned in the Star News article that one of his storefronts sold Italian you know, esque furniture. So this has a more Italian, so it has kind of a reddish brown right. terracotta floor. Beautiful. That's what I was thinking, terracotta, mm -hmm. right. It's terracotta with the arches, the fountain, the ceiling, wow. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is another view. You've got those uh, almost Romanesque arches here. This is when you look at, see here you can see the floor. It's patterned yes. like he would do. Yeah. More subtle but beautiful patterned. This is when um, there's, there's two different entrances to um, Hollywood Roosevelt. Here on the left, that's the entrance from, I guess it's Highland, you were saying, mm -hmm. the side street. And then this is the entrance from Hollywood Boulevard. Mm -hmm. So you walk in and you've got this cool flooring, you've got these arches, it's a long hall. I think we have a picture of it coming up. And then on the left is that lobby. That and then there's two different lobby. floors again. Yep. yep. Two it's, different designs. And the arch is, you know, as the, as the medium between them, exactly like that was done in Greystone Mansion. Right. Look at that cool light fixture. Oh. Mm -hmm. See, he knew, he knew all the styles. He knew Italian, he knew French, he knew Art Deco. 
and Hollywood of course is known for how much it loved Art Deco there were an Art Deco interior for films um, Art Deco interior Art Deco you kind of think as the Hollywood design so absolutely well, here we probably had the guy who probably brought it there that is saying, unbelievable. And that's not known. It's like, how can that not be known? No, you it's think Frank known. Lloyd Wright. You just think Frank Lloyd Like, no, you don't. No, he was mm -hmm. not involved, not in Hollywood almost at all. I um, mean, he t does have a gorgeous house in Pasadena, but it's very, very different. Who did, was there somebody, I don't know if you know this and mm -hmm. it's fine, but was there somebody that he um, partnered with to do interior design, Frank Lloyd Wright? Because he did exterior, right? Right. Well, he would sometimes, you know, he's known for his furniture design. He oh, sometimes okay. would, if, if the client let him, he would design all the furniture. Got but it. But sometimes they didn't want that, they wanted their own. And then I'm sure he had people he worked with because he was it. a big firm. Because imagine if like the two yeah. of them got together. Yeah. Oh my God. There's the oh, fountain. Oh, so beautiful. Look at that. There's the fountain. Another angle. The terracotta, the art, that second level I was talking about. One of them which is houses this charming, charming, kind of like a wine bar. It's just it's so beautiful. beautiful. Uh, it's so fun to visit. And, and mm -hmm. this is public. Anyone who's local, I highly recommend, highly recommend heading out, taking the train or over to Hollywood Boulevard and checking out that lobby because you just walk in there and you're like, oh, you want to chill so out there for pretty. a while. And you're welcome to. You can sit on these couches and just enjoy. Have a martini um, or whatever. This interior, <laughs> again, interior design masterpiece of uh, Edgar Cheese Wright. Yeah, it's so, yeah, this is Highland. Yeah. That's the, that door to yeah. Highland. And see, look at that. Look at that door there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just like you, you, you focus on all the details and it's just They're like so a museum. Beautiful. Every Cheese Wright design, including a studio's building, is like a museum. He didn't let you down ever. He never shirked in any detail. He didn't over detail, but he sure didn't under detail. Mm -hmm. And that's why I've been there five years now. And every day I see something new. I was going to say, you're not or bored. I'm not bored because I'm like, oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. But every design is like that, that the man did. So beautiful. Oh, a close up of that ceiling with the beautiful stint. And look at the color, the red, black. I love that. It's so cool on the green. Look at, again, you, d you don't use color like that unless you're a painter. He had either advice or himself new color like look at that shade of red that's a beautiful dark red that's a beautiful dark green and then the black and the green and the gold it's pretty it's so pretty it's really gorgeous but it's and it, it's it's ornate but it's mm -hmm. not overdone i was going to say the like, colors aren't overdone yeah. the ornate nature yeah. of the stencil is not overdone it's like it's just not tacky right. it's just perfect yeah and that's chandelier again because you can chose. go into a real cheese place yeah. with this. Oh, you could. You really could, but he never crosses that line. And look, you have a little little view of those windows, mm -hmm. which is identical to Greystone because it's the shape. But you've got that cool balcony area, which is so fun to visit. Go up the stairs, look at, look down on the lobby. And like I said, it's a day trip. Mm -hmm. I highly recommend on just taking that day trip and enjoy. <laughs> yep. <laughs> This is um, the grand room. We've got, again, that use of, um, which my boss did, Michelle Frost. She hired a team of muralists to paint a mural, and her only instructions to them was paint a dream. And they did, and people have loved that mural ever since. And it's incorporated into the space, just like Cheese Wright did with the fireplace artwork I was talking about in, in the Greystone Stone Mansion. There's his beam ceiling. When this was built, I think in another episode we have a picture of the original. Um, he had them bare because again, he, as a typical artist, he was always looking forward, looking forward. So since he was in a great of the arts and crafts era, which I will say again because way, way, way past time he's recognized as that, he had his ceilings bare, the beams bare, mm. the wood bare, the, you know, they were just a brown wood. Yes, she painted them this. blue. Yeah. Well, it was just Beautiful. her decision. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did he have anything to do with Chateau Marmot? You know, on Sunset? No, that was not one of his. Oh, got it. There was a lot of talent in LA at the time. Um, I used to work in the Biltmore Hotel, which was very ornate. Yes. And there's parts of that that have, you know, a similarity. But it's more over the top. 
Oh, sure. <laughs> it's, he, cheese Wright never went kind of over the top. He was more modern. I mean, yeah. that black and white flooring, the mm -hmm. stenciling we just saw, he was... He, was he knew where to stop. Yeah. <laughs> he knew yeah. where to like, where art was and where oh, cheese oh. was. Remember in his studios building, the corner shop, which is so charming, sold um, Mexican pottery. He loved Mexican pottery so much, he actually imported it to sell in Pasadena. Well, this is the staircase at um, the Holly Rosewood Hotel. The facade is tiled with charming Mexican tile. It's so beautiful. It's been beloved. It's been used in many, many homes. And there he's got the uh, darling uh, Mexican tile. That's so beautiful. Yeah. It's, it's so like pretty. I want it all. Right. <laughs> like, I want look it. At, look at the, how the color changes as you go up. You talk about a pretty staircase. <laughs> That's true. He never repeats the pattern. No. Oh, never. just one. Here we go. Just the ones. Yeah. 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 yeah chosen. Oh, so beautiful. Yeah. And he loved, loved Mexican tile work and or pottery. Maybe a couple of times, but mm -hmm. yeah. God, mm -hmm. beautiful. Mm -hmm. Just beautiful. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is um, just a cool use of woodworking. And instead of glass, he's got some kind of a netting, metal nets there. Mm. So the um, glasses um, and the bottles show, look how pretty that oh is. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. <laughs> it's, he's so good. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> oh, there's that lobby again with the second level. You can see there's stenciling on the level. You can go up mm -hmm. there and walk around looking down at floor to ceiling curtains. <laughs> this one say? feels more dark, but I wonder if that was like a client request. Well, it's not you know? that light in there mm -hmm. um, because there's no. Maybe they wanted people to come in and not see the street. Oh yeah. Because you're talking about a hotel. Marilyn Monroe lived there. They would house young actresses there. The studios would pay. There's some of her cutest pictures are sitting on the. Um, the diving board of the pool. Hollywood <gasps> Roosevelt has a pool that's still oh, a very popular yeah. destination mm -hmm. to go for the pool. It's a public thing you can go to, but she lived there and they actually, guess where they say her ghost is? Over here. That's where it is. That's where she's, her ghost has most often been seen at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel. Can we talk at all about mm -hmm. like the sort of more paranormal aspects of all of these buildings? You know, people have said that she's right building is haunted. I would say yes because I have had two or three instances where I've definitely seen and heard ghosts there, and I'm s extremely skeptical. I always try to look up anyone who has ever spent an amount of time there. Like with the previous owner, there, the Canterbury Records guy actually had a studio there and another video guy. Both of them saw ghosts. Hmm. A customer came in the other day who had been there when there was a different bar there. He had seen a ghost in the grand room. He had heard um, children playing and running around it was like past midnight Ooh. outside the bathroom door <laughs> which gets a little scary because then we'll later we'll talk about the whole atomic history yeah but um, anyway yeah there's ghost in every I'm mean, sure uh, Doheny how could Doheny not be there where he was sure. killed sure <laughs> right and the butler yeah and the butler so um, poor Cheezer I did have a tendency in his buildings to house ghosts but also maybe it was just the place they that was the most special, Marilyn Monroe. I mean, what a legend. And people have said there's a mirror there in the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel where people have said they've looked in the mirror and seen her, which is cool. Was and it always a hotel from beginning? Yeah, it was uh -huh. always a hotel. But they would, you know, house actresses there. And then, like some of the New York hotels, they had full-time residents. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, they got might it. still have that, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's dark, but then since the ceiling is so high, and you've got that second level, even though there aren't windows, it's not dark like a craftsman home. Mm -hmm. They tended to be dark because not only was there little tiny windows, but the ceilings were so low. Mm -hmm. You never ever see a low ceiling in a cheese mm -hmm. right design. For a public space, they're always high. Plus it just seems like he put lights in sort yeah. of wherever, yeah. in a very ornate yeah. way, and but also functional. And it had to be too part of the, um, you know, this is all, all of his great work was done pre-air conditioning. So as we know, we've mm. just gone through the summer here, it gets hot. And um, part of the use of dark in those shutters is to keep out the sun. Sure. 
because yeah, it gets hot here. <laughs> but also the flooring actually reflects yeah. the light back. So yeah. it's it, it really seems like even though it may have been a request to keep it on a darker side, he still mm -hmm. managed to uh, brighten it up. And that's so beautiful. There's oh, a view. I'm, now I'm taking the picture. I'm upstairs on one of those balconies. And that's, I'm telling you how fun it is to go up there and you look down. And there you are up there and looking down. Now we can see the flooring better. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous terracotta um, tiled floor, the fountain. There's a fountain in Greystone too, an interior fountain. And um, the doors to the bar that we were looking at, the arches. Um, and you can do the same thing at Greystone. You can go upstairs and look down from one of that's that. It's an identical design. There's, again, I'm upstairs. I'm looking around at the other upstairs spaces. He's got some kind of um, shield there. Mm. Uh, there's a shield as well on the ground room fireplace. Right. right in the center. That's because right. that's, an, a, that's a replica of an Italian carved, hand-carved fireplace. Well, here's, he's got a shield again. So definitely there's a bit more Italian thing going on sure. at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel. <laughs> oh, well, that looks like that's it. Okay. That's it for our pictures. All right. Well, that was fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, is there are there any other details that you wanna um, talk about on this episode, or did we pretty much cover it all? I think we pretty much covered oh, it all. Well, but question. Ask question. Yeah. Question. Yeah. Um, where, like, um, did he retire at any point, to your knowledge, or did he work until he couldn't? Well, it's those dark depression. Remember, the depression lasted 10 years. Uh, Cheese Wright had to give up his studio's building. I recently did find out that he leased it. It was probably the way he survived, is hmm. that he leased it to the Navy. It wasn't fully sold to them, and that probably was a way for him to keep an income to feed his family during those years. But Do you he, know where they lived? Yes, they had a, he had had built for him before the depression hit an arts and crafts bungalow built by the same man, uh, Louis DuPont Dupree, who was an Irish friend of his who did the Cheese Wright Studios building. He did a charming bungalow that was filled with arts and crafts furniture. So again, I'm saying we're talking about one of the major guys of the arts and crafts movement that is way, way, way overdue for revival. Where and, was it? It was on Sorry. California Street in Pasadena. Oh, so it's and all right there. When I first found out the name Cheese Wright and looked online, the only, only, only information you could find on Cheese Wright was that bungalow by the realtors because it has sold a few times. And so they say, oh, here's the bungalow by the man behind Greystone Mansion. And then Greystone Mansion doesn't even like give his name mm -hmm. credit. Um, but yeah, so the bungalow has still had a few different owners. It was, you know, again, like I've been saying, he always went, he liked arts and crafts very, very much. He had come from Edwardian design, but he really totally appreciated. And it was a natural, of course, because Gillows of London was a woodworking um, you know, firm with interior design division attached. So he loved, you know, hand arts and artisans and artisans yeah. work. He used hand carvers, he used hand stencilers, you know, he, and that's why his work's so pretty. It's yeah. like, you're you, if you look at a sculpture, you're saying, my God, the sculpture is so beautiful because of what it looks like, but also how it's made. Well, Cheese Art was that sculptor. He made that. He made that interior so beautiful. Every element of it. Yeah. He didn't like get on the phone and, or what, you know, telegram. I keep saying phone. Remember, it was early phone lines, you know, 1908. Um, but, and say, oh, where's a firm I can find that can, no, he did it all himself. And that's why his yeah, he didn't so like great. outsource. He no, did it. he yeah. didn't outsource. Yeah. But so yeah, he did have a home. I don't know what happened during the depression. Um, I think he just scraped by as he could. And his stepchildren are not so readily like available no. to discuss these details. Oh no! Well, his son—they're both dead. And oh well, they're definitely yeah, not readily they're available. They're dead. The son did write that one letter to the editor right. that said, um, you know, that gave him credit for Greystone Mansion. Mm -hmm. That said, I don't understand why um, 
he's not being given credit in this article. Yeah, we know, so I'm sure, but, but I've talked to women who did know him when he was alive, because apparently he was around Pasadena, and they said he didn't do much for Cheese mm -hmm. Right. They said there was some kind of friction between him and his father oh, okay. that he had mentioned. So he didn't, he sure didn't do what he could have done mm -hmm. to, you know, to get his father's name back. And um, the daughter, I don't know what happened to her. There's grandchildren. I don't know what happened to them. I would love to reach them, first of all, to get more family photos. Sure. And any information they have, but maybe they'll surface one day. Right. But there was nobody to, to like, hammer down his legacy. And the military was so avid to erase it. They were so avid yeah, to erase it. Yeah, and will, right. They so were that's just ridiculously avid to erase the history of this man. They w they went into that building and then their strategists thought we gotta get we gotta wipe this guy off the books because we don't if people know about him then they'll look at, they'll wonder what we're doing we're doing here. yeah and they don't want people to know what we're doing here. right so that so that that's gonna be <laughs> that's really our the yeah. culmination of the story yeah. unfortunately that's the culmination of the story yeah um, and we, all I can we, say is talk about living you know you talk about a, a writer who's died you talk about their living word. Jesus Christ God is living work. Yes. And it's appreciated every single day and will be. Yeah, know? and hopefully by more eyes, <laughs> yeah. which is what, what we really so want to happen. So whatever tragedy hit his life and there actually was a woman there, she um she said she'd seen Cheese Wright's ghost there a few times. Okay. So I'm sure he's walking the halls of his building. When and where <laughs> so he passed away at around the bungalow? He passed he passed away. Um he, he lived for a while. He died in his um, mid seventies. So he didn't die young, but um, who knows what he did in those eras, just tried to yeah. find a way to get by. I mean, I just can't yeah. imagine somebody that <laughs> was such a craftsman and such a hard, you know, diligent worker to then like not do anything. I yeah. almost feel like there's, there, there, there might be, right. be right, right, like some works that yeah, we don't I'm even sure know that, about. Yeah, I'm sure there is. I'm sure there is. Pro he got doomed in a way because the scale of his project was for millionaires, and millionaires were like wiped out by the depression. So if he, he wasn't look at the go-to guy for people on more projects of more humble scale, because right. they did do building in the 30s. But um, it not, to that, yeah, not to that, not to that, yeah, intricacy. So they probably mm -hmm. thought, oh, he's too, he's too much for us. Sure. You know, we, so I don't know, but somehow he did manage to get by. And, and maybe he thought he wasn't, yeah. he, maybe he didn't want to, like, do anything outside of these yeah. lavish. He could have been an artist, you know, who was very, you know, kept pretty firm to his own vision. He could have like done bids for projects, you know, and then they're like, oh my God, the price is too high. You know how that right. goes. Right. <laughs> and, but the point is, as we're, as we're concluding this episode, the point is, is that there's so little there's information, so little information that it's, there's it's the, so to the point of like being ridiculous uh, yeah. and also a little bit questioning of like, well, why yeah. is that? The sad thing too is he lived long enough to see it. He saw his name being wiped off the books. And that makes me very sad. Yeah. To know that he had had such a vision and done so much great work and then saw with his own eyes and experience himself being like wiped off a of history. He lived long enough to know that happened. So it's sad. It was a tragedy. All I can say is that, you know, it won't be in the long run. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so we'll we'll go ahead and close this episode out on that note and um we'll revisit with the final or at least one of the final episodes about what happened to the Cheese Wright Studios building in the lost history. The yeah. Lost history of the, the final the final lost right, history. Right. Like where where did it go after right, Cheese Wright, right, basically? Right, right. All right. Um <laughs> Thank you thank for you. listening. Yeah, and thank you so much, Jenny. <laughs> sure. Until next time. Okay.